Okay, so good afternoon everyone. Today I'd like to welcome to this press conference Jerry Matter Parai, who is to be New Zealand's next Governor General. Jerry will be sworn in on August the 31st, taking over from Sir Anand Sachina. Lieutenant General Jerry Matter Parai is a highly regarded leader with a distinguished 38 year military career. He joined the New Zealand Army in 1972 and rose through the ranks, serving and commanding in a wide variety of roles. This culminated in his appointment as the Chief of Defence Force in 2006. He is currently the Director of the Government's Communications Security Bureau. Jerry will be New Zealand's 20th Governor General. Jerry is an excellent choice for Governor General. He will, be, he will bring great mana and a wide range of abilities and qualities to the role. These include judgement, energy and enthusiasm for encouraging excellence in others, particularly young people. As Governor General, he will, he will have the opportunity to work with a wide range of New Zealanders and develop an active programme in the community. Jerry has served New Zealand with dedication and honour throughout his career, and I'm delighted that he has agreed to continue that service in a new and broader role. Can also recognise Jerry's wife Janine and their children and acknowledge the contribution they will make as Jerry carries out his role as Governor General. Finally, I'd like to thank Sir Anand for his dedication and service as Governor General and wish him and Lady Susan all the very best. Jerry Mataparai's term will be for five years from the date he is sworn in, and I'll now take this opportunity to pass over to Jerry so that he can make a few remarks and we can take any questions you might have. Thank you, Promise. Um, when the Prime Minister asked me to meet with him a few weeks ago, I thought he wanted to discuss with me my arrival at the Government Communications Security Bureau. GCSB. You cannot imagine my surprise when he asked me to be New Zealand's next Governor General. Although I knew that it was an extraordinary honour to be asked to be the Queen's representative in New Zealand, I did need a few days to think it over and discuss it with Janine. I soon realised though that it was an opportunity that I could not pass up on. At the same time it would be fair to say that the move represents and represented a significant change of plans for me and my family. My working career has been one in service of New Zealand. I consider myself fortunate to have led our Army, our Defence Force and latterly GCSB. That experience should be useful when I become the Governor General later this year. And the more I've thought about the role of Governor General, the more confident I've felt that I could develop some of the things that I've been um, interested in that I've seen as important. The notion of service to others, the drive for excellence, and harnessing the strengths of young New Zealanders. I have an unshakable belief in New Zealanders. There is a Kiwi spirit that gets things done with humour, ingenuity, practicality, and without bias. I've seen that spirit shine through in many New Zealanders who have served in our Defence Force. Often, in very difficult circumstances. Recently I've seen that same spirit in the aftermath of the tragic events in Christchurch. The terrible loss and grief that Christchurch has suffered has brought out the best in Cantabrians and all New Zealanders. The compassion, the generosity that have characterised the community's response to the earthquake are a lesson and an inspiration to us all. As I've conveyed to the Prime Minister, I look forward to serving our country and New Zealanders over the next five years. There's still some time to go before I assume the role and lots of things to do, things to learn and briefings to absorb. I also know that I'll need support from others to do it well. I'll, thinking, I'll be thinking more deeply about the office and what it entails in the months to come. I certainly also want to draw on the wisdom of my predecessors, all of whom have brought to the role their own unique strengths, talents and mana. My family is important to me and I'll need the ongoing support of Janine and our children. Janine will continue to provide me with her own special brand of encouragement. Of our five children, three are grown and we still have two teenage sons living with us. As most parents of teenage boys will know, the boys will keep me well and truly grounded. In the meantime, I will continue working to protect New Zealand's security with the men and women at GCSB. 
that too has been and is an honour and a privilege. Thank you. What does this mean for Māori? Uh, I guess, Barry, that um, you know, there will be people who will be looking at this as as part of a um, you know the, the process that we've um, that we as a country have, have looked at, and I think it will be viewed you know very positively. What do you see um, the main role of government general? Uh, there are three roles, it seems to me. There's the constitutional role, uh, and that's an important piece which I will need to uh, you know, take in over the next six months. There's a community role, um, which you know, I, I hope to develop, as my predecessors in the office have done. And then there's you know, the, the personal role about how I you know, work with, with my family. Is it appropriate for you to carry on your role as director of PCSB? Why don't you speak down now? I can probably answer that if you like. Uh, look, we sought advice on that. Um, Jerry will be stepping down in June. The advice from the State Services Commissioner was that there was no conflict and that was appropriate. We know that the election day will be November 26, so I think that's a, a, an appropriate separation and we're comfortable that it's, um, it all works. When did you decide on um, Lieutenant General Matt Pry as, as the Governor General? Uh, well, we probably finally uh, decided in my mind that it was the right uh, person, and Jerry was the right person probably about six weeks ago, uh, and approached him around about a month ago, I think. And why did you make that uh, decision? Why is he the man for the job? Well, look, initially we put together a list of, um, uh, you know, quite a wide list of, of New Zealanders that could fit the bill. Um, I uh, had always thought that um, Jerry was one of the front runners. Um, I thought he brought to the job the attributes I've discussed. He has great mana, great leadership, uh, a real compassionate uh, view for, towards New Zealanders. Um, and I, I think he would bring his own style, actually, to the office, which uh, is, 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 as every Governor General does. So, uh, in the end, I'm thrilled he took it. He was our first choice, and um, I'm pleased he accepted the role. Hey, uh, well, well, I've got almost an initial question about yeah. um, GCSB. I mean, yeah. in terms of, I guess, the broader notion of a separation of powers. I mean, is it, is it appropriate to have someone who's still actually in a, in a semi, semi sort of military or security role yeah. um, lined up for, for this job as the uh, representative of the head of state? Well, there's no inherent conflict there, and that's why the State Services Commission is comfortable with that. Uh, there's literally, um, I mean, in terms of separation of time, I think everyone's comfortable that from June to November is, is appropriate. At the end of the day, he's um, served New Zealand for 38 years in a military capacity and in an apolitical role, so. So, Jerry, uh, you said it took you a few days to uh, think over the offer. Uh, what advice did your uh, wife Janine and your, your children give you uh, about taking the job? It was more about the advice that my wife gave me, in in terms of you know this is as I said you know, a big move for our family. It, it represents a change in the the things that we were thinking we were going to do, and it meant that we needed to be quite clear in our own minds about what. You know, what we would do both in the next six months but the next five years. So it was just talking through those sorts of things, you know, you know domestic things, where we're going to live. That sort of thing. And when you think about the, the time that you've spent in army barracks, it's a, a bit of a change from the opulence of uh, government houses. Um, we're quite looking forward to seeing what has been done at government house. Um, you know, everything that has been relayed to me about you know the, the refurbishment you know, it makes me you know, really privileged to have that opportunity to 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 live there. Um, so you know, we're looking forward to you know, getting into the role. You're a head of the spy agency. Are you sure it came as a surprise to you? <laughs> <laughs> it, it did. Um, and so it just goes to show that there are secrets that can be kept. They didn't do anything on the phone. They're not secrets. No. Okay. Uh, yes, yep, um, uh, he will get knighted. In fact, the, the technical things that will happen is that uh, he'll be elevated to the Chancellor of the New Zealand Order of Merit and has made an additional Knight Grand Companion of the Order. Um, so he will be um, Sir the Right Honourable Jeremy McBride, Lady McBride. He's also got quite a few polls as the um, most, most popular choice notwithstanding that I am a person that follows polls closely, I didn't actually look at those ones, so no. Um, but uh, look, I mean, he, I'm sure those polls uh, reached the same conclusion, or those that participated in those polls reached the same conclusion that uh, I did, that 
um, you know, Jerry's role in the military and his leadership uh, in that uh, capacity has been exemplary. Uh, that um, he's just a warm, engaging New Zealander. And uh, I think if you look at the role of Governor General, of course, there's the aspect of the Constitution, but it's also you know, it's the leadership of the community. It's, it's leading our country, particularly when we have um, situations like we have at the moment with the, the Canterbury earthquake and the rebuild of Christchurch. Um, it's incumbent upon all of our leaders to, to show the, um, that they can lift people up and, and bring them with them. Did you consult with um, Phil Goff about this? I have, yes. So I rang uh, Phil Goff, um, I think a couple of, I think it was about two or three weeks ago, my office contacted him. He was totally supportive. Also rang the Queen a couple of weeks ago as well. On the constitutional say? role, what Just about... Just <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> On the constitutional role of the Governor General, what arrangements will be in place for advice uh, on, on decisions that might have to be made? Well, that, that's ultimately a matter of government house, but he's supported by the um, cabinet office and will have available to him as Governor General all of the appropriate um, advice that is necessary. And he has a clearly, completely independent uh, role. And in the end, if we're in a position to put together a government post election on November 26, then we'll have to follow the, the well worn path of, uh, have, of the constitutional arrangements of confirming both publicly that we have the support of the majority of the House. and. Uh, in my capacity as the leader of the National Party, going to uh, the Governor General and informing him that I believe I can command a majority in the House. He's um, a lot younger than some of the previous yep. Governors General. Um, and I mean, there's a reason I think you said why people are appointed in their 60s. Um, perhaps you'd consider giving him two terms so he wouldn't be, <laughs> so he couldn't take most value out of them. Um, Look, it's been a well, again, you know, sort of uh, uh, precedent's always been that it's, it's one term. But uh, one of the reasons I was um, attracted to the proposition of Jerry becoming our next Governor General is because he's younger. Um, and I just think that, um, you know, I think it's, it's really, you're a young modern country. I think it's a, it's a great fit for what we're doing. General Matakura, you joined the Army in 1972. Was that, was that as a private? Is that, is the Martin, yes. Did you ever think you'd be standing here one day elevated to this position? Martin, no. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us a bit about how, you, how you've come to be here? What, what were you sort of looking to do when you entered the armed forces? And now that you're in this it's a long time ago, but um, you know, as young New Zealanders still you know, seek to join uh, our three services, there's an element of adventure, there's an element of service, um, there's camaraderie, you know, a whole lot of those sorts of things. And, um, I just wanted to do something different, you know, really different. Okay, so finally, can I just um, pay tribute to um, Sir Han and Lady Susan. They really have done a tremendous job in the last five years. It's been a privilege to work alongside uh, both of them. We look forward to doing that until um, Jerry's sworn in. Uh, and we'll Thanks very much.